So we're here at Toronto's InterAccess Electronic Media Arts Centre with Lee Ronaldo. I just saw a rainbow fall into the floor Shattered into pieces your eyes ask what for What made you want us to uh, come here? You know, whenever I'm in Toronto, one of the things I like to do is to check out what's happening on the art scene here, because uh, I have certain connections to, to uh, people in, in the art world here. You mentioned you have a strong relationship with Toronto, and Sonny Keith shot the video for Disappearer. Here. Yeah, yeah, uh, we did, with Todd Haynes. Yeah, we actually aired that maybe last year, and Damien talked about it. Uh, what do you remember about that shoot? For us, it was maybe one of the most, uh, like, real video shoots we ever did in terms of, like, real filmic. Like, we were driving up and down Young Street at night in a car that had like you know rigging on it so that there were cameras hanging off the side and like cameramen hanging outside the car and stuff like that and you know we were driving back and forth on Young Street for a few hours that night filming the, the main scene and um, you know I have a I have a relationship with Toronto because my wife's Canadian and we've got family here and so I've been coming here a lot It was the first time I really learned that Toronto had this kind of film scene going on here where I mean that's why we shot it up here Todd was working on some other things and he was like well you know Toronto has all the resources we need there's a big film scene there and I hadn't really realized that before you know and uh, so that's my main memory my main memory is driving past that um, I don't know if it's still there that record store with the big neon the, record the big neon it's records gone. yeah it's, it's gone. gone I think I remember looking for it last time I was in town but the, those big neon discs were really cool, and I think they feature in the video a little bit. Last night, the new album was inspired by Hurricane Sandy. Uh, how were you personally affected by the storm? It was about a week of um, not having power, light, heat, and water, and you know, in the evenings there wasn't much to do, so I found myself just plunking on my acoustic guitars, and you know, a couple of different songs kind of came out from that are on this record in that period. Someone in the crowd has been falling at her feet. Did that experience, is that what inspired the album title? Well, the, the song Last Night on Earth was, was written during that week. I didn't, I was hesitant to make it the album title because I didn't want people to think it was an album about, a, you know, about the apocalypse or something like that. It's, it's one song and it's not even really ultimately about Hurricane Sandy. It's more, uh, I used it as a jumping off metaphor for kind of like a science fiction story of, you know, the hypothetical last night on earth kind of thing. But it did prove to be a pretty productive period for me. I got two or three songs on the record out. That's, I mean, I got them, them started that week. I'm sure everyone asked you this. Uh, I thought we should ask, what's the current status of Sonic Youth? <laughs> right now, everybody's pretty absorbed in, in what they're doing individually. Uh, Kim's got a new record out, and Thurston's been putting records out and touring like a madman. And um, I don't think any of us are really thinking about uh, what the future might or might not be. We're not saying amongst ourselves it's definitively over. In, in, in spite of what one or another of us may have said in the press here or there, but you know, between us, we're not—we're just not talking about it right now. I mean, I'm not, and I don't think anybody's interested in talking about it right now. It's kind of a, a, a good period for it just to lay fallow, and we'll see what happens. You know, it might just become archival from here on out, and the, maybe there'll never be new music or performances. But you know, none of us are saying never at this point.